You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Today on our Training Thursday, we're actually going to do a book review today. So I've got a great book sitting right here in front of me at my desk in Boston at the Cabral Wellness Institute. It's called The 100 Best Ways to Stop Aging and Stay Young, Scientifically Proven Strategies for Taking Years Off Your Body. And it's by Julia Moranin. And I'm telling you, this is a fun book. It's a great book. And I'll tell you, I pulled it off my shelf when just kind of flipping through my library, looking for um, specific books that I thought might be great for a Friday review and to look at things that I know most people probably haven't seen because they're not kind of like the top 10 New York Times bestsellers, but in their own right, fantastic books. And so much of this has to do with exercise and overall healthy lifestyle. I knew this would be the perfect book for today. Tomorrow on another Friday review, definitely tune in. We'll be going through a lot more product reviews and items like that. I do love those Friday reviews. But what I want to do today is I want to take 10, not 100, but I want to give you 10 of them. And then of course, if you want to pick up this book, It really is fantastic, and I'm going to link it up in the show notes just like every day. If you miss kind of what I say during the show because I might be talking too fast or whatever it might be, just go to today's show, which is stephencabral.com forward slash 278, and I will always make sure that I have those links up to date, and usually they're ready right away in the morning when the show comes out, if not, maybe just a couple hours later. So let's get right into it today, and again, these are just really great methods to start not waiting until you're 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, maybe 100, is you want to start implementing them now. And the reason is this, that our body is going through a continual process of breakdown and building back up. I talk about this all the time in my practice of the the fight or flight versus the parasympathetic or the sympathetic nervous system versus the parasympathetic and how one is catabolic and one is anabolic. We don't want too much of either one. What we want is this nice little rebuilding process. But what happens is as we age naturally, our bodies start to break down more. There's more entropy than there is of rebuilding. And that's really important to look at because really the more we slow this breaking down process, the more that we slow this inflammation, this cellular degeneration, this shortening of telomeres on the end of our cells, the longer really we can live. And how long is that? Well, no one really knows, right? I do believe that genetics do play into this. However, I also believe that you can maximize your genetics, meaning like your lifespan for you might be, let's say, 78 to 89 years old. Like maybe there is, again, this is just conjecture. I'm just kind of using my opinion that I think that for certain people, like we all have those ranges. Where other people, like their lifespan might be maybe no matter what they do to their body really, right? Not like it seems that way for some people, not no matter what, but close to it. They might be able to live to like, I don't know, 78 to maybe 95 for them. Again, just conjecture, but I see this because I see it in families and I see people where this longevity just seems to be in the family. And and when you look at that, I can say, wow, that's pretty impressive. And I see other people where like their longevity is more like late 60s. However, I've been able to work with a lot of those people and they're well past the age of when their parents had a heart attack or whatever it might be, a stroke, because now we know we can prevent those things. So that's what it's all about is tapping into those genetics and making sure that, um, yes, that might be in your genetic code, but you don't have to allow for the expression of that. And that's the beautiful thing is that we can actually not allow for the expression of certain things like cancer. And that's why, you know, there might be four sisters in a family. All of them have the gene for breast cancer, but only two out of the four get it. Why is that? Well, because of toxicity, because of other things going on in the body that allows for that expression. That's why uh, functional medicine and really anti-aging based medicine is, is, this is it. I mean, we're at the forefront and we are really getting deeper and deeper every single year. So let's get into this today, what everyone can do to, yeah, I would say, yes, live longer. Absolutely. Absolutely. But also feel younger. That's what it's all about is start to feel 
younger now. And what does that mean? Well, more energy, your skin is more supple, it's more vibrant, you have more glow to your hair, your eyes, all of those things. And that really can be done, and it can be done quickly. I see it within 12 weeks. Honestly, you know, within 12 weeks, I see people making tremendous change. So, Let's get it started. The first one is tip number 13. Follow a Mediterranean diet to lose weight and live longer. The cornerstone of my nutrition protocol is a Mediterranean diet. Is it exactly like a Mediterranean diet? No, because I customize a little for each person, but also I make sure that I get that smoothie in the morning. Now, that is Mediterranean. It has berries in it. I absolutely am a big proponent of that, but olive oil, that's my number one healthy fat, So, or olives in general, really, really fantastic. So Mediterranean diet, try to get as close to that as you can. And of course, you know, you can add in other things, but really every study over and over and over and over, a Mediterranean diet helps lower inflammation. And all these diseases that we're talking about are for the most part inflammatory diseases that we can do a lot about in terms of just changing our nutrition. So in order to, because again, so much to do with preventing disease and living longer is maintaining a healthy body weight. And that's why when I talk about weight loss, I'm not talking about from a vanity perspective, although I don't have any issue with that. I'm talking about from a health perspective. The smaller your waist within reason, right? We don't want anyone losing too much weight. The smaller your waist and really waist hip ratio, the better chance you are going to have to not get diabetes, to not get certain types of cancer, to not get cardiovascular based issues, all of these issues. So really, What we want is really to strive for that smaller waist, and this is tip number 18. And the way you do that one way is to really try to reduce stress. And by reducing stress, you're actually reducing estrogen levels and you're reducing cortisol levels, both really, really important. So definitely, definitely keep an eye on that and either work with a great personal trainer, nutritionist, or feel free to follow one of our protocols. So really looking at that anti-inflammatory diet overall. So what does that mean? Well, I'm telling you, I use the crowding out effect, I call it. And I'll talk about this more in a future podcast. But what I do is I make sure that people are eating somewhere around six to eight servings of fruits and vegetables daily with most of those about six coming from vegetables and two coming from fruit. Now, that's the minimum. If I do that, they're going to be satiated. They're going to be full. They're not even going to be looking for all those other processed foods that they used to have in their diet. And I'm telling you, that is one of the absolute best anti-inflammatory ways. Now, can you use an omega-3 product? Yes, if you choose to. If you don't want to eat fish because maybe you don't have access to wild caught fish that are lower in mercury, that are low in toxins. That's really, really important. Something to look at. All right. Next tip. This is tip number 30 in the book. Defeat depression and stress to minimize brain aging. So important. They gave a couple tips like exercising to lift your mood. Absolutely believe that even if it's just for a couple minutes in the morning, you've heard me talk about that with my lymphocyzing last week on episode 271. Check that out. I love jumping up and down. It's, it's kind of funny, but really it does get that lymph pumping and so amazing for circulating the blood and just making you feel good. But make making sure that you're part of a community, that you're part of just a group that's there to support each other really huge. Um, Taking walks, that's what I absolutely do. Taking my deep breathing when I'm doing that walk and just kind of like shedding out all that stress. So tip number 31, it looks like the next one, increase your mental focus with mind-body techniques. And so over and over, they're finding that meditation is so beneficial for people. And a lot of times they're like, but we don't know why. Well, You should know why, because what it does is it reduces cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. The more stress you have in the body, the more you age, the more you break down. That is where the sarcopenia, that is where the entropy, that is where all of these things happen as the body starts to deteriorate faster than it can build back up. You reduce that stress by doing things like yoga, tai chi, meditation, or maybe just painting, knitting, playing with your kids, grandkids, doing what I do, which is just no matter what, unless it's raining sideways, literally, I'm outside every day at lunch and I'm taking a walk and I'm breathing in through my nose and I'm breathing out through my mouth and I'm just relaxing my body. So you need to find a way that works for you. It doesn't always have to be cross-legged sitting doing meditation. There's nothing wrong with that, but maybe it doesn't work for you yet, but you do have to reduce those levels of stress and just focus on mind body, right? Focus on it. All right, next up. Really, their tip is uh, snooze your way to a younger brain. I love this as well. Now, it doesn't mean snooze, hit the snooze on the alarm. You've heard me talk about that before, how that's not a good thing. You should be waking up, getting your body revved up when that cortisol is going, and then no taking naps during the day, except if it's a 20-minute, just close the eyes, calming that sympathetic nervous system. That's fantastic. Do do that if you do get the uh, chance to. But what this is, is just trying to focus on getting to bed a little earlier. The more 
hours before midnight, the better. That is scientifically proven, more regulated in what's called the diurnal rhythm. You produce melatonin at the appropriate time. You produce cortisol at the appropriate time as you're waking with the sun. So try to get your between seven and nine hours per night. If you're worn out, if your body is just stressed and your just body is just and mind is broken down, central nervous system is really fatigued, more hours of sleep. How do you know how much you need? Well, your body, if you're in a good rhythm, well, you go to bed at somewhere around 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock, and then you will literally go to sleep and see what time your body wakes up in a nice dark room. It should wake up somewhere between seven and nine hours later, and you should not be anxious when you wake up. You should be nice and calm, relaxed, and then within a few weeks of that, hopefully having a little bit more energy. All right, let's see what's next. We're almost there. Avoid these brain agers. So I thought this was important. I'm certainly going to talk about this more in the future, but drugs in general, Drugs in general are going to create free radicals, not good for the brain. Alcohol, caffeine, some of those, I mean, those are drugs as well. Some of them are vasoconstrictors like caffeine. And yes, there are some benefits to it. Nicotine, of course, is not a very good thing. Alcohol, there are far more harms from alcohol than there are benefits. So there are far more cons than there are pros. If you're drinking alcohol, once a week, a couple of drinks, that's it. Maybe twice a week, maximum. Believe me, the benefits of alcohol certainly do not weigh all of the toxins and the poisons that they add to the body that your body and liver have to use to then detoxify. Remember, you're putting poison in your body. It literally, you would die if you drank too much of it. Not a good thing. And you know, something that's become more and more popular is marijuana. I'm not going to say not to use it. I'm not, I mean, in my opinion, I'm not saying whether we should legalize it or not legalize it. I don't, it's not really my department to get into, but what I can tell you, certainly not as damaging as alcohol. I'll tell you that. And the the second part though is you still don't want to use it. It's still, I mean, unless you are using it literally like a drug, like a supplement for a specific malady. And again, for the most part, unless we're talking about like cannabinoids and CBD oil, which is being used right now in autism and cancer that looks fantastic. We're not talking about smoking marijuana though. We're actually talking about the extracts of that. So again, I don't want to get into a debate on this. And if you choose to use it, fine, use it like alcohol, right? Or use it as a drug, just not daily because it has its own negative side effects. It is a supplement. And if you need it, then it can be very beneficial But also, if you need it, if you're using it for anxiety, if you're using it for those types of things, look at the deeper underlying root causes. That's my two cents on that. All right. So next up, make sure you are doing strength training. Too much of the time, we are not focused on really how the human body is meant to work. And it is meant to do labor. It's meant to pick things up you know, and really put things down. You're meant to either be a a hunter gatherer or you're, you know, you're just working that with your body. That was really, really important. We are an organism. We are an animal that's supposed to be in nature really. And so strength training is the closest we can get to that unless you are someone that works outside those types of things. So, but what else does strength training do now? At least twice a week, Wayne Westcott, Dr. Wayne Westcott does great studies on this a couple decades back and still doing them today. And I've met with Dr. Westcott multiple times and it just shows that at least twice a week, if you're working with weights, it can just be 20 minutes at a time. If you want, it's going to help keep your bone mass up, prevent a lot of osteoporosis, prevent muscle wasting. Again, uh, men and women are losing about five pounds per decade of muscle mass. Just think about how that can lead to fractures and other falls when you're older, but also a lessening of metabolism. All right, last tip out of the 100. So again, this is my 10th tip to you, and this is tip number 99 in the book. Do not let your genes shorten your life. So really important, just like I talked about, if you are not eating processed food and you are not getting those blood sugar spikes and you are not eating inflammatory food and you're not creating that inflammation systemically, whether it's in your gut, in your brain, you are not gonna have to worry about your genetics as much. Remember, your genetics, it sits there in the background unless you use that key to unlock it, to allow those to come to fruition, to the forefront, they're not going to become those specific issues that you're worried about. In my family, everyone has grandparents. My parents had it, autoimmune-based issues. I started to get it when I was in my early 20s. My fingers were all achy with rheumatoid arthritis, my thumbs especially. And what I did was I had to reverse that. Those are in my genetics. I know they're there, but I don't have any of that now. I don't. And the reason is I no longer allow for the expression of that. I've taken my inflammation way down. So again, hopefully this was helpful to you. I I think it's a great book. It's a fun little book. And you know what? You can keep flipping through it. It's motivational. You might pick up one new habit a month. And you know, 
why not? I think it's cool to have. So it's called the 100 best ways to stop aging and stay young. So I'll link it up in the show notes. You'll be able to find it, of course, at Amazon. And uh, of course, anywhere else, probably bookstores would sell it as well. Thank you, everyone, for once again, tuning into the Cabral Concept. And of course, if this show would be helpful to anyone else you know, please do feel free to pass it along. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.